Hello my loves, welcome back to my channel. For today, I wanted to share with you my 2020 luxury wish list. Today is actually Chinese New Year, so I'm wearing pops of red. I was also wearing my Chanel mini. If you follow me on Instagram, you would have seen a lot of you loved it. So yeah, this is a new in sweater actually. It's so warm, it's super thick. As you can tell, it's super oversized as well, but it's super thick wool. It's really, really thick. I can even wear this as a dress even. Uh, by the way, I'm just wearing shorts at home. <laughs> so as you can tell, this is a great sweater. I highly recommend it. Uh, it's from Balenciaga, guys. You can probably tell. Logo plastered. Amazing for winter because it keeps you super warm and cozy. And uh, you could layer, I suppose, but it's so warm already, you don't really need to. Anyway, that's beside the point of this video. Let's get started for 2020 wish list. So coming up with my wish list this year was a little bit more challenging. I think it's also because I am feeling a little bit, what's the word? Less and less things attract me. Of course, Chanel is still one of my favorite brands, LV as well, and I will always be on the lookout. Having said all that, let me share with you um, my wish list. And I'm trying to go in order of preference, I suppose, or in order of what I would like to work on first, but that doesn't necessarily mean that that's what's gonna happen so first on the list is the lady dior i've talked about the lady dior for so many years um i feel like this year i should probably take the plunge and i have two in mind i definitely love the lady dior mini size because i feel like it's the perfect dainty size for me it just looks great on my body frame um, i love the beautiful chain that it comes with and um, probably gonna go with some sort of gray color. So the pearlescent gray that they have is beautiful. The lambskin is still a little bit more worrisome. Uh, I don't know. I, I feel like people say that Dior lambskin is great, but I still feel like, yeah, uh, there's a little part of me that still feel a little bit worried. I also think about the My Lady Dior, so the size up is great as well. Number two on my list, I actually wrote something else, but I'm thinking of changing it around um, because I wrote this list a while ago, like just last week, I guess. Um, but I'm already thinking of changing. So for my number two, I think I want to get the 30 Montaigne, so the Tante Montaigne. The beautiful, iconic, well, I don't know if I should say iconic, but it's the beautiful release that they had last year. It was a big push with influencers. Like I said before, I never really have any issues with brands pushing a certain new item with influencers because it's either you go with advertising on TV or you go with influencers and what better way of doing it with influencers and celebrities, right? Especially if you go with the plain leather version with the gold CD in the front, it's just very, it's very simple but it's it looks very classic, it looks very wearable, it looks like something that you can also dress down. So it's it's such a great design that I feel like whether they had influencer push or not, it just doesn't even matter. It's a bag that I've really admired from afar from uh, for a long time last year, but because I was so busy concentrating on curating my Chanel collection that I totally ignored Dior but I definitely loved it. So this year I feel like, yeah, I feel like I'm feeling very strongly with Christian Dior in general. Uh, I'm feeling very, very strongly with Dior. So hopefully that's something that I can also add on to uh, my collection this year, really grow into the Dior collection as well. I only have a few pieces of jewelry as well as a vintage clutch from Dior so far. Um, that's all actually, yeah, that's that's all I have right now. So if I could even just add these two bags on the list, I think it would be amazing. My third item, which was supposed to be my second item on the list, is the Louis Vuitton Palm Springs Mini. I know, I already owned this bag before. Unfortunately, I had to return it back to the fashion house because of a defect. And at the time, they didn't have a replacement right away. And even when a replacement did come, I didn't like the replacement that they had. It looked really, really 
beat up already even for a new bag and I was also not told about the new model coming out at the time so it was a bit of a letdown from the brand and just from the essays in general but I don't know maybe it was just their house rule I'm not sure what's going on over there uh, customer service has definitely been more of a decline for me with the Louis Vuitton as a fashion house um, at least in Vancouver I don't know about your city where you live but for me it's definitely more of a decline um, I feel like globally a lot of us are experiencing that but the reason why this is on my list is because I do really miss the bag I like it a lot as a casual everyday no worries about the weather type of bag um, it's on my list but I downgraded it a little bit just because it's even since like last week that I wrote this or the two weeks two weeks ago that when I wrote this I'm already feeling a little bit less strongly about this bag just because I feel like whether I add it or not I'm a little bit indifferent but it's still on the list I saw one comment on Instagram about the zippers being too exposed and almost like scratching your hands so that's something that I heard so I'm not sure if I'm okay with that um, so yeah, either way, whether I add it back or not, I'm kind of indifferent, but it's on my list. So sticking with the same fashion house, I was also intrigued by a couple of new releases that are coming this year. So the On To Go MM Tote is already out by now. I don't necessarily need a tote or another larger size bag in my collection, but I just thought that the idea of the On The Go is slightly different than the Neverfull. Um, it's a totally different vibe, totally different look, so that's why I'm interested. But it depends on when I see it in person, whether I would love it or not. So that's also a maybe. And then another new release from the Fashion House, I think it's coming up in March, is the Boite Chapeau. PM. I forgot to say it's boite chapeau soup. So it's the supple boite chapeau, not the hard one. So the the malleable boite chapeau in a smaller size. From the dimensions on Instagram that I saw, um, it's pretty small actually, but it should still be roomy enough for everyday use. I like the idea of that. I like the idea of a smaller version of the supple boite chapeau. So we shall see as well whether that will be uh, a love at first sight or not so so far these are the only three items from Louis Vuitton that I might be interested it's just a maybe uh, I'm not even sure if I'm gonna get any of these items so the last handbag on my list before I move on to other luxury items that I would love to add is from Christian Dior again also the Trente Montaigne but the box bag so the clutch size box but I love the idea of it because it kind of reminds me a little bit of the um, Louis Vuitton uh, Petite Malle except that it, I don't know I, I like the Dior version a lot more I love the fact that it comes with this extra statement thick strap that you can also remove um, the bag itself is just a lot more uh, attractive to me. I, I, I like the Petit Mal when, I, when it first came out and I think I still like it from afar but practically speaking I feel like the uh, box bag, the Tante Montaigne box bag is actually even more user-friendly. That one is a maybe but I really really am attracted to it. I feel like if I added those three items from Christian Dior I would be totally happy. That was also one of the reasons why I didn't want to get into it last year because I'm like I don't want to get into the slippery slippery slope of getting deeper and deeper into the brand and getting that ready to wear and this and that so it's a slippery slope I'm sure if you've watched one of my haul videos last year I did add the Saint Laurent slides I think they're called the Nu Pied or the um, Tribute Nu Pied Nu Pied stands for barefoot I have not had the chance to wear them yet just because it's we're in the middle of winter but of course once I start wearing them and if I feel like they work out then I might even get another pair of those another brand that I was looking into in terms of 
um, footwear and in terms of sandals is from Hermes. I think people call them Oran sandals, but to pronounce it properly, it would be Oran, are something that I'm looking into. I'm thinking about the one with the heeled version. Again, not sure if they're comfortable or not. I hear a lot of mixed reviews about these sandals. Um, a lot of people actually prefer the Saint Laurent, so we'll see. Um, but that's probably the only other thing that I'm gonna look into, uh, actively look into buying. Obviously, this is just a wish list that I can work on uh, actively this year. It doesn't mean that anything else that comes up that I see that I like, I'm not gonna add to my collection. Obviously, that's not how it works with me. Whatever I see that I like, I'm gonna jump on it, or at least I'm gonna think about it and then jump on it um, because once it's gone, it's gone usually. So, <laughs> so yeah, so for this year, I think the main three items, if I can even say that, the main three items that I wanna concentrate on is definitely the Lady Dior, the Trente Montaigne, and then perhaps the Trente Montaigne box bag. And then from LV, possibly the Palm Springs, if not, possibly the Bois de Chapeau soup, uh, PM size. So those are pretty much the main items that I'm gonna keep an open eye. So I want you guys to comment down below and let me know suggestions. What do you think about the color combination that I should get in the Lady Dior? Uh, even the size actually. Let me know what your feedback is. I know a lot of people are pro mini and a lot of people are pro my Lady Dior size because it's more universal. But at the same time, I don't know. I, I, I'm just, the Lady Dior has been so hard to, to really take the plunge. Um, there's several reasons. The fact that even though it's a classic, it doesn't hold its value. It's a lambskin. The mini size is so tiny. Uh, you know, I get a lot of these different comments and I do also read about them on first form myself. So it does deter me a little bit. But I feel like this year I should really just take the plunge and try it because it's such a beautiful bag. Whenever I see anybody wear it or whenever I see anybody post on Instagram about them wearing it and styling it, it just Oh, it just makes me googly eyes. So do let me know what you think, which combination I should get. Um, same thing with the Trente Montaigne. Let me know what you think about the bag, which combo color I should get. I think now they have either the calf skin, like the box calf skin, or they also have the uh, crackled lamb skin. That looks so pretty in person. I hope that you enjoyed listening to my wish list and what I'm concentrating on this year. I feel like it's going to be an exciting year just because we're stepping into a world of unknown, at least for me. I I'm not very, I mean, I'm familiar with Dior, but not super familiar because I don't really technically own any of the new bags there. I have a vintage one, but that doesn't really count, does it? Anyway, thank you all so much for watching. If you're brand new to my channel, please don't forget to subscribe, like, and comment down below, like I said, and I'll talk to you guys again very soon. Bye!